Crouch. Bind. Set. Joe presents the House of Rugby together with Guinness. Hello and welcome to a special edition of House of Rugby. Good to have you with us. Brought to you by Joe as always, together with our very good friends at Guinness. Now the countdown to the Women's World Cup in New Zealand is well and truly underway. We've got locations and branding being announced all the time. We've also got uh, almost 18 months to go until that first ball is kicked in anger. It promises to be a truly special event. And it will also, would you believe, mark 27 years since England first won the Women's World Cup. And they did so with all three of our special guests on this show. For the next hour or so, therefore, settle back uh, and let's reminisce with three legends of the game, three great stories about that inaugural win with three pioneers of women's rugby. First of all, Nikki Ponsford, welcome to you. Obviously, you. 50 caps for her country, took part in England's first ever test match against Wales in 1997 and wore the number two jersey in that 1994 World Cup final. She's now the head of performance at the RFU and many call you the godmother of women's rugby right now. Is that fair to say? I don't really... I'm not sure I want to be a godmother, but I think I've been around that long. It probably counts as that. Certainly Queen Bee for now. <laughs> so Giselle Mather was perhaps the orchestrator of that performance from 12, not five half, cap 34 times, now the Wasps Ladies Director of Rugby after coaching the Barbars and working with Elite Player Development at London Irish, where you helped the likes of Alex Corbusier, Jonathan Joseph and Anthony Watson, amongst others. I did. What do you remember those that lot in the early days? Oh, they were... They were had a, a most amazing group to coach. So... Yeah. I, I don't know if you know London Irish, but Dan, um, when before we moved from... Was that Sunbury Way? That's right. And um, we had this bit of astro turf around the back of the clubhouse. And on this particular evening that I can recall, we had... Uh, it was absolutely pouring with rain, pretty much like it is now at the moment. Yeah. And um, on that bit of astro 20 by 20, I had Alex Corvisario, Marlon Yard, Marcus and Anthony Watson, yeah. Jonathan Joseph, uh, Tommy Homer. Yeah. And we uh, we were... But catch pass, catch pass, and it just started to build and build and build, and the intensity started to build, and I let it go with that, and more and more, and then eventually Tommy Homer got splatted by Marcus Watson, and his nose just split across burst. his face, burst open, blood right. everywhere, and Tommy in those days never said anything; he was known as the ghost, just barely ever spoke in his you know younger years. And uh, he turned to me and he goes, your bloody contact session said it's all your fault. Look at this. He says, I've been playing this game for 15 years and never. I'm just pointing at his nose. But and the rest of the boys were in hysterics. But it was an incredibly intense session. Really? And you could tell then that all of those lads were going to go. Going to go far. Yeah. Thank you for bashing them up on their road to the top. I'll be <laughs> very grateful forever. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, last but not least, um, we were reminiscing about the headband just now. The great Jill Burns, England captain for five seasons, played in four World Cups, won 73 caps. And now the Lancashire RFU president. And a tremendous All privilege bow. it is. All bow. <laughs> um, I'm going to come to you first of all. It's, it's so nice to have you here. And I'm, I'm actually genuinely really looking forward to this. And just before we started recording, I said, so, you know, how, how nice is it to be back together? And you said it's been about 45 minutes since I last saw Nikki. <laughs> is there still quite a close bond between that crew and, and the fact you're all still involved in the game? There is. There is. Um, we don't get together as a, as a massive group that often, but when we do, it's always fantastic. It's, yeah. it's such a, a special time in your life. And yeah, it's really, really a great memory. It's a great it. memory. It's a nightmare. <laughs> yeah. no, no, I'm joking. Involved, as it was. no, I'm joking. The few times when we've got together en masse, you know, even the girls that you haven't seen for 10 years or so, they walk into the room and, and you, you're back there and you, you, you feel the same age as you did at the time. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we just have the fun, banter. Yeah, it's brilliant. Really good. How busy are you at the moment with the, the Lancashire presidency? What does that involve and what are you doing? Very busy and wonderful it is. Um, obviously, I have to go to all, all the Lancashire fixtures, but I've yeah. made it my sort of... The aim is to visit as many clubs in Lancashire as, as I can. Yeah. Um, I'll how not get round are, eight. How many well, clubs are there? There's actually 63 buildings to visit, so right. I'm doing my best to go to as many of them as I can. Well I'm, I'm on 40 odd at the moment. Yeah. Uh, do Saturdays, Sundays, and Wednesdays for the student games. Yes. Uh, minis and juniors on a Sunday morning, coats yeah. or women on a Sunday afternoon, and uh, the men's sides on Saturday. And I've been crafty because my home club's Waterloo. So yeah. When the uh, Furwood Waterloo men play against other Lancashire clubs, I'm visiting the team they're visiting. So Very I clever. get to watch my boys Tactics. as well as uh, <laughs> as well as supporting role. Lancashire rugby. Um, and you've obviously come in from the office today, wearing yep. the stash, very smart. How is everything? A good win over Ireland. Tell yeah. us a little bit about your role and what you're doing and um, what day-to-day -day involves. Day-to-day <laughs> -day involvement. Lots of different things. But, no, I mean, I think um, 
yeah, come over from come over from the office. Been in a meeting about player welfare today. Been having conversations about whether the England Italy game is going to be on. We've been looking at whether training is going to be on for the under 18s this weekend because of waterlogged pitches. So a, ver- a, a whole variety of things really. Because I oversee England and the pathway and TP15s. Um, there's a, there's a lot of different things that come into the inbox really. A so varied to do list. Yeah. Mm. Good to have someone who knows how to get through it all in charge. And how's everything with you? Yes, yeah, good. And it's good. Yeah, it's waterlogged challenging. pitches we were talking yeah, about. Yeah, waterlogged, right? definitely those. But um, the girls, are, they don't moan. They really don't moan. They're fantastic. Yeah, they get on with it. We try and do some of the more, you know, vary things around. We've got an indoor space that we can use a bit for a bit of it. So if I can keep them indoors and get benefit out of it, we do yeah. a bit of that first. But uh, no, they're, they're fabulous. Whatever's served up, they just get on with it. Good. Do you all still love the game as much as you always have done, Jill? Yeah, I, absolutely. More? And less? Always? You've always been passionate about it? I've you? always been passionate about rugby and I always will be. Um, I really miss being able to play. If my body was fit enough, I would still be playing now. Right. Uh, but Are you ever but tempted you, to... Because you didn't finish that long ago, did you? Well, not, I did really. I finished properly in the early <laughs> 2000s, but I've played but, in some veterans games. Yeah. <laughs> Some veterans games with the boys as well, which were quite good fun. Very nice. The Waterloo yep. veterans teams. Um, and then we've played against Wasp Legends. Um, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you a story about that. I right. went over there having had an, I'd, I'd had an ACL yeah. injury thing. This is two years ago, whatever it is. And so I hadn't done anything really since and certainly hadn't rehabbed in the way that the athletes rehab. And so I, I said, yeah, I'll come across because it was the day before the World Cup final in yeah. Ireland. So I said, yeah, of course I'm coming. Oh, but yeah. So I rock up and I'd make very clear in my own head that I would not be playing in this game. <laughs> First person I see is Jill. And so I walk into the clubhouse and it was fab, wasn't it? Because she yeah. had all these camp beds set out and we were all staying in this little attic where we had mice as friends and God knows what else. It was unbelievable. It was hilarious. Good. And several of the old World Cup squad stay in there. And uh, Jill looks at me and she said, so uh, you got your boots? I said, no, 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 I'm not playing. She just looked at me. She went, so... When that game kicks off, you're telling me that you're not going to stand there and think, oh, I wish I'd done this. She said, shops down the road, off you go, go and buy some boots. On off I trolled. It's exactly as I was told. Still barking trolled. orders. <laughs> Within five minutes, I'm playing in the game. And, and that's what happened. Did, did you, know, it was great fun, did you wear, you wear, you so wore a bib? You wore a bib, which says don't tackle me. OK. And the Irish Seven wiped me out, right. at which point I had a massive hissy fit, which amused everybody, because that's what it used to be like on the field. Right. And all, a lot of my waspy players were up, because obviously World Cup final, so yeah. everyone rocked up at this game. And uh, oh, that, that amused them something wicked. I bet. So, yeah, I when got absolutely it? knocked into the middle of next week. Right. <laughs> They're obviously not doing the job. No, it didn't. When, when was the last time you played? Uh, it was for Wasp Legends. Was not it? in that game, but probably two years before that, I think. Um, yeah, so I've had a couple of uh, tours with Wasp Legends. Yeah. It's brilliant fun, yeah. I had to say. Very good touring club. Very good touring club. But it's... It, it, so, yeah, the off-the-field pitch is brilliant as well. Off-the-field bit is brilliant as well. But the on it, it's just been hysterical whenever we've been on the pitch. Yeah. You know, we, we played against... Um, Jersey or Guernsey and there was 150 Jersey. caps in the front row against this side that had played oh I don't know maybe a dozen games <laughs> of rugby yeah. it was a little bit harsh but and a bit younger so we, though a bit younger that side was we, right. and we, we weren't we obviously didn't we didn't scrummage properly because that would have been very unfair but yeah. it, meant, it meant myself and the two uh, Nessie's actually got to run around the pitch and mm. play this this game of rugby mm. that everybody else had normally played, and we were passing. We were, you know, it was it was it fantastic. Drilled spirals to the corner, yeah. a couple of drop goals, perhaps. Well, we didn't <laughs> quite go that far, but you know, there was a there was a lot going on that you know we yeah. never normally do. Mm. It was brilliant fun. Mm. Quite informative as to what the game of rugby can be when yeah, you're not quite laden with the job of, of yeah. pushing it all yeah. together. You just made a really interesting point about what you were like as a player. Will you? I want you each to describe each other as players back in '94. So, Nikki, what was Jill like as a? Jill made my insight. line out throwing look really good. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it was the most important thing. So if I just put the ball somewhere up there. Jill caught it. Didn't matter where it was, yeah. Jill caught it. So it was kind of like, yeah, everybody thought I could throw. No, Jill could catch. That was the important was bit. <laughs> was Jill quiet, noisy, nervous, aggressive? What was she like at sort of temperament wise? She definitely wasn't quiet. No. Quite. Very, very motivational, always from the back of the scrub. Come on, we can do this, we can do this. It was always, there was always lots of chatter and lots of talk and. 
There's one particular game I remember, and you'll know which one I know this what is. Say. Yeah, we were we were out in France, yeah. um, in Grenoble, and yeah. beautiful place to play has to be said. But the um, French crowds were always really, really vociferous really? towards us. They oh yeah, still are. loved it, mm. loved it. And every time the French touched the ball, they're all banging on the hoardings. It's really like, as soon as we touch it, complete silence. Yeah. I mean, it was just like really eerie, wasn't it? Was, it? Yeah. And um, they hadn't told us this, but Oliver Rumour kicks off. So it's one of the things they do. Oh, yes, do. So they like celebrating yeah, yeah, kickoffs. Yeah. yeah. Well, we didn't know this. And she's standing there. She's going, am I supposed to catch this? What am I supposed to do? It's the game starting. She's stay freaking on, out. On. So she's freaking out. Yeah, that's what I said to us. Well, just catch and play. You'll find out. So anyway, so she went, of course, it stops and we go again. Anyway, there was this brown ball, wasn't it? it do you was remember? It was an old leather ball. Oh, and yeah. all of the backs, me included, yeah. we're all spinning out all over the place about this thing because it just was... And, and Janice Ross. So it's Jane Mangum, it was. Just for God's sake, it's a ball. I just catch it. Jane Mangum. <laughs> anyway, yeah. the story about Jill. So we're in, in that, and she gets absolutely clobbered. Spear uh, tackled. Yeah, into the and ground. Heads. Yeah. And so the medics come on, and this is back in the day. It yeah. wouldn't happen now, but back in the day. And we were 9 0 down already. Like yeah. Three penalties going against us all over the place. And everyone's spinning out here, there, and everywhere. And so I, I got to medics and I said, She isn't going. Yeah. And they said, yeah, but she doesn't know where she is. And she's just sitting there going like this. I said, I don't care. I said, if she goes off the field now, we lose this game because she was our talisman. Yeah. I, so, can re- I can remember you holding her face. Like, yeah. I was like, you're I not going to say off the double field. Giselle. She said, focus between the two. <laughs> so I'm telling her. And I said to her, and she said, I don't know where I'm going. I said, I don't care if you walk around in circles. I said, yeah. you're staying on the field until we've got control of this game. Yeah. So the medics are looking at me. Anyway, she stays. We start to get control of the game and then we scored and we're and things. So we're, we're taking the lead. And I go up to her, I said, so I can go now. She goes, no, I'm fine. I'm having a ball. I'm staying. Not back into today. Yeah, it wouldn't happen this day, would it? No. But I can't, I can't remember. The, I remember talking to you. I, can, yeah. I scored in the game, which I didn't remember. Yeah. And I sort of came to in she the had a great game. opposition uh, changing room, trying to swap my shirt. And I thought, I think, I think we won. I think we won. And literally, and then I had to walk back down the it's pitch. Cracking game. But they were the days when the French team were playing in the all singing, all dancing, wonderful changing facility at yeah. one end of the pitch. And we were in a shed at the bottom end with a hole in the floor toilet oh. and oh, benches. Wow. And, it, and the two touch judges came and got me as captain and walked me through the crowd, not down the pitch, walked me through the crowd. And I was spat at oh. on the way to the, other, to the other end by the crowd and um, to do the toss at the other end. And then the, the officials stayed at the other end so I ran back down the pitch I wasn't going to go back through the crowd no. but that was fired me did that, a bit when did, I got did that kind of thing motivate you or was that oh, kind yeah. of just totally unacceptable absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. I used to yeah. love playing the French yeah. mm. loved it absolutely yeah. 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 will you describe Giselle as a player I mean she's sort of given an indication already in the first five minutes but uh, noisy yeah. aggressive no, angry not aggressive or angry no very very noisy right um, a quite she'd like to control the team um, in that in, in the World Cup you were playing twelve weren't you so we had Karen Almond at ten but you'd hear Giselle I mean together. Karen was a fantastic player but you'd you'd hear you'd always hear Giselle yeah. she'd organise people around and she'd motivate people around her to to yeah. keep going so yeah happy smiley always always put a smile on people's faces so very valuable part of the team that's a nice testament yeah yeah and Nikki level headed the m- biggest memory I have of Nick she's Really tough. Like, things yeah. to bother on the field at all. She had a job to do and she'd just do it. And again, against the French in Castlecroft. And it was a, that, that turned like, that was vicious. Nasty. And, yeah, it did. And it just was... a little knowing nod. Yeah, Love yeah it. it was. And, but and, they were the best games. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and what happened was our scrum went down and the whole lot of them went over the back of her. And I, I can remember going absolutely nuts because I could see what they shoot the hell out of her. The shirt was ripped. And the... the Stud marks down her back were just ridiculous. And I'm looking at her going, you're right, she just moves me out of the way. <laughs> She's ready to go, yeah, absolutely. Right. And uh, yeah, the next swim didn't go back, did it? So, no. Uh, but no way would she ever consider taking backward step or anything like that. That's what I remember really clearly of Nick. She was really tough. And next oh. game, up ready for the next one, despite the fact that she was battered. It's like, yeah, whatever. Crack into so. it. And I mentioned line outs again. Nikki could put the line out ball anywhere you needed it. I mean, it's the days before lifting. You know, you is, is that a compliment? It, it, it went anywhere. Or, or you could put it anywhere. Yeah, anywhere exactly. you wanted it. No, no, yeah. seriously. Semantics. And it's the days before lifting. So, yeah, because I, I, I used to dance. I was, I was, I was I had great elevation. Ooh. So being big as well, I get me get up in the air, and it just used to fall into my hands. It was fantastic. Elvis so she indeed. was absolutely pinpoint accurate, and. I've never seen a cadence as fast other than Jason Robinson. When she gets going, her little legs go like mad. Very, fa- very fast cadence. And she'd move like, r- move really, really quickly. And, I, and I've just got a vision of Nikki's 
scurrying into the distance yeah. with their little fast steps. We're all but pounding guys, to but try and catch up. But then I ran completely differently to anybody else. Burns's knees were up here. Mine were like, didn't feet didn't come off the floor really. <laughs> but, but yeah, but really, Both really got the job good, done. Really good. Yeah. And she always used to chew in the days when you could come through the centre of a mall. She used to pop out of malls all the time, and and we'd all run into in support. So yeah, absolutely brilliant. Incredible. Yeah. Did you get World Cup winners medals? Yes. Where is your World Cup winners medal from 1994? Now? In my drawer in the front room, actually. Is it really? Yeah. Well, and when I've did got... you last get it out and think, yeah, that was, you know, that was a special day? Or has uh, just been gathering dust for... No, no, it's, it's there because that's where I know it is. Yeah. Just because it's otherwise it I'd have just lost it by yeah. now. So it's, I've got a number of other bits and pieces in that drawer, but it's in that one drawer. It's in there. Where's yeah. yours? Uh, mine was taken by my mother. If anyone knows my mother, she's very organised. And with all the pin badges that are swapped during that World Cup. Yeah. And she and my dad made a, a, a raised frame. Yeah. And it's in the frame with all the pin badges and the people are swapped with from that tournament. So I've got, actually got, got it like framed. And only a couple of weeks ago, I've moved house. Yeah. And I actually put it up in the hole. So it's, ah. uh, so it's there, to, there to see. I like the fact you're celebrating it. Yeah. You've lost it. You genuinely lost it. Yeah. How long ago so, did you lose it? Oh, ages. My, my, I gave it to my dad um, to look out for, and then, and then when they moved house, it's just disappeared. But the thing that is for me is that it was at the actual World Cup final was on his birthday, and he couldn't come to the game. He used to watch me all the time and everywhere. So he was at the semi final, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, but he didn't come yeah. to the game. And when we came home, we were on a the train down from Edinburgh, one of these overnight things or whatever it was. And he was on the station at King's Cross running with an England flag down, yeah. down the thing because we'd obviously won it and we yeah. were back. And I have that flag. That's right. Oh, mm. that, so, oh. Yeah, that <laughs> flag is... Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, let's get into the story itself. Actually, before we get into the story, um, where did you, where and how and why rugby? When did, when did you start playing? So I used to watch, I started at Loughborough, but yeah. I, I used to watch rugby all the time. Was, I was kind of like, I'd really love to play. But no, there was, you know, nobody in, my, nobody in my family played. We used to watch sport all the time. And it wasn't a sport that, it wasn't a sport that I did. And I remember the last thing I said before I left home, my dad took me up to university. And the last thing my mum said to me was, don't play rugby because it, you know, it somewhere I'd read that you could play rugby. Yeah. And she said, don't play rugby. So the first thing I did was find out where the rugby club was. So as soon as I kind of got to Loughborough, that's what I did. And I was really fortunate to play with some absolutely outstanding players mm. and have some outstanding coaches that yeah. were... Jim Greenwood. Jim Greenwood was Jim there. Greenwood. So Jim was one of the, the first coaches that uh, I was ever coached by. So, you know, you and can be God coached of, by... Mm. God of coaches. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. yeah. Um, where, how did you get into rugby boots? Um, I was a dancer, hockey player, basketball player, athlete, swimmer. I couldn't decide between any of those sports, really. Yeah. Um, and I was at a hockey tournament in Hightown, and I was quite powerful and big, and I knocked somebody over who obstructed me, took the ball off, I scored the goal, <laughs> turned around to pick her up, and she said, the way you play, rugby, uh, the way you play hockey, you should, you should be a rugby player. And I said, I'm sorry, but you obstructed me. I thought she was being funny. And she said, no, no, I'm not being funny. She said, I play rugby. You should too. And I, and I was a, a newly qualified PE teacher and wanted to give opportunities to boys and girls to play any sport. And for the rest of that hockey match, all I was thinking was, I'd like to actually, I would, I would, I'd like to actually have a go at this. So I had a chat with her after the game and she said she, uh, she played for Liverpool Polytechnic at, at Waterloo. Yeah. Um, and she said, we train on a Sunday. And I, I went the next Sunday and knew from that first minute that that was, that was my sport. Amazing. Um, and never looked back. Am I right <laughs> in saying that it w there was a sign on the door? Yeah, there was a sign, no women, no women or dogs allowed. <laughs> there was a sign that said guide dogs permitted, but there was, a women, there was no women or dogs, a little gold plaque. Um, and it was there when we first started. Um, How long did that last with, with no, you well, getting in and out? And it, it didn't last very long at all. Yeah. But nobody, the officials at the club said it, it wasn't theirs, and, but it disappeared. Right. None of the girls moved it. Somebody moved it. Um, I got blamed for moving it, but it wasn't there for long. <laughs> can, you can you confirm or deny? I, I absolutely didn't touch it. Oh, OK. I, wouldn't, I would never do that. <laughs> I mean, thankfully, that what was called the men's bar. It's still called the men's bar by some other people in their 80s, but it's now the players' bar. But, you know, I can't remember how many years, but 
we, it's we not got, that long ago we got, in the history of time. Well, the, the Waterloo, we, we started playing there in 87 for the Poly. Yeah. In 89, we set up the women's team there. Yeah. And then in 2004, I became club president. So my name was on the board, which is on the wall of that bar where women weren't allowed. So right. it was absolutely fantastic. Like so that. it took a while, but, but we got there. You couldn't get into the changing rooms without going through the bar. So there's no way it was going to be called a men's bar. Too true. <laughs> Very good. Um, and you found the game at uni. Is that right? You found the game at uni? I did, but my, my very first memory of, of, of rugby, my dad used to play for Wasps, not pre- not professional, yeah. but he used to play for us third team or something like that. And um, therefore, rugby special was on on a Sunday night, wasn't it? Yeah. Back in the day, this is. We're Thank really you. going back. That would have been the Starmers. Right? And as a, yeah, yeah, that's right. And as a seven, eight-year-old, my dad and my brother and everyone, he'd make us all sit down and shut up while he watched rugby special. And yeah. I just can remember saying to him, this is boring. Why do they just kick the ball off the field? What's the point? Yeah. Anyway, so that never was something that I was going to go towards. And then it was at university on a hockey pitch. I actually was had one of those moments where I was looking at myself. So I was on this hockey pitch in the middle of Devon, yeah. digging up the centre circle with my stick. So <laughs> I was really bored. Yeah. And uh, I went back to, um, to uni and my boyfriend at the time was a, a first-class player in Wales. He used to play for Aberavon. And he said to me, why don't you play rugby or something? I'm so stupid. But we then had a course in in teaching to yeah. do this, you know, to learn to teach the, to the to little ones, and I like I enjoyed that. And then yeah, one thing led to another, and long story short, I ended up playing the first game I ever played was sevens against Loughborough against Karen and Claire, Vivian, and all at Bird. And oh yeah. my god, that was horrendous experience. <laughs> oh really? Oh well, Why? yeah, they were so good, and it was my first ever game. Right. All I remember doing is running around hitting people. Never saw the ball. Burst a blood vessel in my eye and was like, this isn't funny. So it was another year before I actually took the sport up. Right. But yeah. Brilliant. I mean, brilliant stories. When you, where we are now, and obviously, you know, Maisie's to, to have gone on to win the World Cup, having been a little bit dubious about it at the start. When you look back now at 94, what are the, what are the memories that leap out? And how do you sort of reflect on it? first thing I remember is being out of breath for the whole World Cup final because we just we just felt like we we pushed the American <laughs> scrum the whole way down the pitch and that's my overriding memory of it it's just like going exhaustion <sighs> yeah every time we stood up we just scrummaged again just we just sense. kept scrum driving again. and it was just it was they did score it one was really funny from our 10 no their 10 meter all the way right yeah. that was the that was the piece where you just go <sighs> And then yeah. the game was over. That was the other thing. I just it thought the game by. went really yeah. quickly. The one thing I, I remember really is that I remember walking out from the changing room onto the pitch and I don't think I've ever felt as calm for a big game. Really? And it, I, I, fe- I felt it maybe, I don't know, you, you look back and I just felt like it was going to go right. It mm. was, we were ready. This was our time. Yeah. And it was like a serene feeling, which is unusual before a big match because you're normally all fired up. But I, I can remember this walk from the, the, the changing rooms there and walking across through the crowd and just thinking, this is, this is it. It's time. We can do I this. that too. Yeah. Like, I that absolute, too. absolute confidence. Because um, we'd beaten them the year before. We had, and, the, and the pack had only got stronger. And that's what we did. We we stifled we stifled them really yeah. and, and pushed them back. Because they were reigning champions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. They were. yeah. I think I think because obviously the forwards and the backs experience of that game was very very different. And but for me, we played France in the semi final on the Wednesday. That's a good game. Yeah. And it was a good game and beat them. Then on the Thursday we were left as a recovery day. And then Friday we went in to do video analysis. Now in those days we didn't do video analysis very often, did we? There wasn't mm. many opportunities where things were filmed or anything. Mm. Well, it was a video. And we had it. Yeah, it was. <laughs> the it, it, it was. Yeah, and it went yeah. Yeah. into the thing. Yeah. And um, mm. we had a team meeting, and I left that meeting knowing I was going to be a world champion on the on the Sunday. I just mm. knew it. The way it was explained, what happened, mm. how we were going to play the game, why we were going to play it that way. And at the time, the American backs were unbelievable. Yeah. So, but the forwards were shabby in t- technically shabby yeah, um, yeah. so they, they were powerful women Athletes, but, not mm. but yeah. technically yeah. shabby so um different pre- pre- so they were sort of all prepared to this we were all talking about defense and how we were going to hold these backs and how we were going to stop them and who was going to hit who and do all this sort of stuff but um yeah so and i remember opening the curtains of the of the hotel we were in we we're in the george in edinburgh and i could mm. see the posts where we were going to play i just looked to them i was like yeah, here we go and then on, onwards down and then throughout that game it, yeah uh, but that said the first time the Americans got 
got the ball in the backs, was in their own 22, and they passed it. So I'm, and Jackie, my outside centre, came flying in on my man. I was like, I know we're going to win the World Cup. You obviously don't. <laughs> so she came, the reassurance. She came flying in this way. So I tried to get outside to hit the Never got there all the way back, but we just snuffed it out at the top. So I looked at her and she's looked at me. She went, That was my fault, wasn't it? And I went, It's not about that. I said, Do you want me to tell you exactly what you're going to? She goes, Oh, just tell me and I'll let it. Yeah. <laughs> all game, I'm going, uh, me chatting, but all game, I'm going, That's mine. She's yours. She's yours. She's yours <laughs> all the time. She'd just go, Boom. And then she'd just take them out. She was brilliant, but she just wanted clarification each who, time. Who to hit? Mm-hmm. Line them up. And then she absolutely wiped them out. <laughs> yeah. Talking about the George Hotel, though, um, the reason why we ended up in the George Hotel was because the men. Uh, 1993, yeah. the men's sevens when That's right. Prince was on the wing and Lawrence Delalio was yeah. a young man, um, and that they'd won the World Cup sevens and they'd stayed at the George and we heard that because we paid for our own accommodation in those days, so we, we we had to make a decision at training whether we would pay a bit more and yeah. stay in the World Cup hotel and we made a collective decision that yes we would we'd push we'd push the boat out and we stayed in that lovely hotel and it just felt like a World Cup winners hotel can you remember but how much you paid absolutely i can so on the I've sunday night the we got we got uh, yeah. uh, uh, the medal and we won on monday morning 1800 pound hotel bill wow. all of us yeah, yeah. I, I don't think my, was that my mind wasn't that much. You obviously had £100. Yeah, you, you, you went no. lot of the minibar. I've got, I've got 800 quid here. Yeah. From, no. 801 <laughs> pounds for Jill. You, what did you spend a 1,000 quid on? No, it, was 800, it was 100 pounds a day, the hotel, and we were there for 18 days. Wow. Well, I've, I've still got my bill in the album. Yeah. No, but it probably wouldn't Might have been overlooked the post, so maybe yeah, that's true. what it is. Yeah. But it was... I don't know. But, yeah, but we made but a how ridiculous decision. is that? We would stay in a good hotel, and it was fantastic, and it was... Lovely. That That's is a really interesting. I mean, it's it's been women's rugby has been on a remarkable journey. But do you look back now and think actually we were pioneers and we kickstarted where the sport has got to now? Or do you think do you think do you think the kickstart came later? Did you feel at the time was there a, did you feel a pressure that actually if we can if we can make this happen if we are, we will begin to to change things? There were four women weren't there who who put their houses up as collateral for. Uh, like that. to yeah. remortgage yeah. the houses the to run the World Cup as, as guarantee against the World Cup. Now, without those four women, would we be having this World Cup in 2021 in New Zealand? Would we have had those? I very much doubt it. So I, I do see it that way, that it has to start somewhere. Yeah. And that's where it started. But and and without the start, somewhere it has to start. Yeah. So, And then from that start, it builds and builds at different speeds. Yes. But yeah, without those four, there wouldn't be a World Cup, would there? No, no, and it, but it's interesting when you say, "Do I?" F-, you know, we were chatting earlier, weren't we? And mm. saying, "Do we feel like pioneers?" And it was kind of like, it was almost like there's a there's something to do, and you just make it happen. Mm. And it, do you, I'm not sure that you necessarily at that point in time feel like a, a pioneer. It yeah. was just like, okay, well, well, we need to get to we need to get to Edinburgh. Okay, well, we're going to have to book a sleeper train. Okay, well, we there was about four of us came went from Bristol. It was like mm, we scrubbed some money together and mm. make it happen. And it, it, and it was just you just did the things that were in front of you. Yeah. And and you know I think certainly from my perspective it was just an exciting journey. Mm. You know I was I was just taken along with the <laughs> with with great. the whole <laughs> sort of yeah. crest of a wave in mm. some respects and just kept doing the things that I love doing. It was brilliant. Mm. Well, that was it. We, loved, we all love the game. Yeah. Uh, and if you wanted to play on the Sunday, you made sure it happened. So, you know... Did you organise your first game? Or am I making that the, up? No, it's true. The, the, um, the, the first England International, You yeah. did, didn't you? Yeah, you yeah. organised you the did. first England International? Well, it was... Um, I, I played one was game. Was that Waterloo, I, wasn't it? I, I played one game for Waterloo, Ooh. and then we had the divisional champion, the divisional training, and it was yeah. North training session. And the, the captain at Waterloo, oh no, it wasn't Waterloo, it was when we were Liverpool Polly, had played one game. And she said, Come to North Trials, you'll learn a bit more about the game, it'll be good for you. So we went to North Trials, and we played, we did drills in the morning, played games in the afternoon, and the coach said, How many number eights have we got? So there's about 12 of us put our hands up. So we said, Well, uh, how many of you can double up at second row? So everybody else left their hands up. And I'm like, I've only played number eight. So he said, what about you? I said, I've only ever played number eight. And I think he thought I meant I've been playing for 14 years at number eight. But right. I meant I'd only played once. <laughs> so I ended up playing number eight in the divisional championships and got picked for the England squad. So I'd hardly played, really. Um, and I was learning with wonderful Jim Greenwood yeah. in the England squad. And somebody came to England training and said... Uh, the man from Sweden wants to come in the autumn. Is there anybody that would like to organise it? So I just 
Well, we'll do it. So I put my hand up and uh, my ex-partner, he, he played for the North and, and he was an England students player. So Steve knew how to organise something like that. So yeah. sort of between us, we uh, we just, yeah. Called took, it together. Took a man's, a man's phone number from Sweden and I was driving back up home thinking, I've got to organise an international match. And I, at that point I was thinking... I'll, I'll really enjoy it because the girls will play at my home ground. I'll watch it and yeah. didn't dream that I'd, I'd be, you know, a few months later actually playing in the team. But, um, yeah, we organised it. amazing. And then, Did you and win? I sort of, re- I sort of came, came to realise what was going on as I was singing the national anthem and it suddenly became all emotional because I'd been literally running around making sure the commissioners were in place and the girls that were selling T-shirts were sorted and the people in the bar were OK and... I'd love to see Owen Farrell doing that on Match Day. <laughs> uh, England Wales, making sure the concessions are out and uh, yeah. programmes are being sold. Yeah. Um, how do you look back on 94 now? Have people told you that, that without you and what you achieved, the game would not necessarily be... Pe- pe- people do say that all the yeah. time. Yeah. And, and you've just got to say, we did what we could so we could play. We did it for selfish reasons because we wanted to do it, but it, it has paved the way for other people. So it, 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 it is a great honour that people recognise us for that and we've all yes. taken the part. Nikki, you know, Nikki's worked in the game and done so much for women's rugby, it's unbelievable. Yeah. You know, um, Giselle, Giselle's now working in the game at Wasps. I've only ever been a volunteer, but we've all put 100% into, in, into women in rugby and it's, it's going places. It's amazing, the progress. I think, I mean, now. yeah, it, the what Nikki's performance team, the, the the international team now, it's just it's phenomenal. It's extraordinary. Yeah, you're going to add to that. Yeah, I was going to say. I mean, I look back on '94 with really fond memories because I had, a, had an absolute ball for two weeks. You know, mm. it was brilliant. Mm. You're with your mates there for two weeks and getting to play rugby, and it was yeah, we had a great time. I really, you know, really, really, really enjoyed it. And it's one of those things that you'll always you'll always keep. Um, Do you remember Killer? The game, chaos. yes, chaos. chaos. Yeah, mm. to be killed. It's killer or chaos. So we had this uh, 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 because it's in the hotel, and you know you're not allowed to go out, and you're not allowed to. Well, you can go out, but you know what I mean. It's yeah. not out, out. So um, we had this thing. You drew a name out of a hat, and whoever's name you had, you had four days to kill. And there were, you know, people had to be creative about it. So she got Car- Jill got Karen Almond. Yeah. And Karen came screaming down the corridor, going. <laughs> who's done this? And we all come running out of our rooms. And her bath, she'd run a bath, right? And then gone out, gone away while the bath was running. She'd run in, poured red uh, food dye into it and then sprinkled almonds all across it. She was Karen Almond. No, and put, a, put a bag of ground almonds like, floating on the top all, of the bath the of blood. And, oh and and that was her day. No, right. you, you just had to... I went down to breakfast... And Janice Ross, it was, I didn't know at the time. And there was a, a knitted plait that she'd put and it had been severed and there was like blood at the end. And, and, like and that's burned. you. And yeah. she was, that she basically, you. you threatened people. And, you, yeah. and it, everyone's yeah. like looking behind them. Yeah. And you could, it's you, I can't fun. remember how you actually killed them, but you had to go up to them and yeah. say, to Well, I got, I got, so it was on my, my, my birthday was the day before the um, semi-final. Yeah. And my dad sent me this big bouquet of flowers. So I get, somebody comes up to the room and in that bouquet of flowers was this teddy bear with a 12 written on it with a, been great pin right through it with a noose around its neck and it just said be careful that's all it said so that was my warning anyway at training that afternoon they said to me the coaches said to me you're gonna have to cover nine we've got a problem with one of the nines which at the time I was like you're gonna have to cover nine so we need you to do some passing whatever after training so I was like okay fine so doing all this passing and they're filming it and then they said, just come and look because there's something wrong with your right hand. I looked at it, it just says in the, in the thing, it says, bang, you're dead. I was like, great. <laughs> so it was one of the coaches. You bloody won the World Cup final. You're a bunch you're of psychos the by the sound <laughs> of it. And, the, and it was, there was one, that, I mean, one of the ones that I remember was the <clears throat> dummy that was hung down yes. over, out of one of the windows. The windows that's right. So that when, I can't even remember who it was. Like but as they literally. Yeah. Force they, disturbed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very creative, somebody yeah. Opened, uh, opened their curtains, there was this noose and this dummy hanging outside the window. It was. I mean, I think it was very creative. Yeah, it was, I think it was, it was a lot funny, of it was creativity a funny, yeah, going really on. Entertaining. Yeah. Do you remember how the squad was announced? I can't imagine it was... I don't even think Sky Sports News existed back then. We was were on it? grandstand after the game. Were you? Yes. Weren't we? Mm. We were on grandstand. I remember that really clearly. It was, and something, it, it was on live because it was something, yeah. something like a Grand Prix no, it was a, or it was something. 20 minutes of, of highlights afterwards, which A, women's sport on grandstand, B, this happening. Yeah. And the reason that I remember that so clearly is because I watched it with, I was stood next to Jackie Edwards, my centre partner. And of course, we'd only been world champions for two hours or something like this. Yeah. And they showed, so Karen, it, it was probably the try that 
made us all go, yeah, we've got this. And Karen kicked, me and Jackie chase up. Player comes to me, passes, Jackie intercepts and runs, I don't know, 15, 20 metres to score the try. Mm. She puts it down and they show and she blows her cheeks out afterwards. And everyone's cheering in the bar and what have you. And Jackie goes, oh, my God. And I went, whoa. <laughs> and all she could see, she said, I'm wearing two sports bras and they're still out of control. Right? <laughs> and that was a comment. And it was just brilliant. I looked at her and I went, that's the try that probably won the World Cup. And all you're worried about. Uh, just I brilliant. And I've, I remember that all the time. What was the, what was the event? There was something on live, like a Grand Prix or a Sunday Grand sta- Stand was on. And it, because, it, because it was on a Sunday, yeah. they, they saved a little section mm. for us. So. And the, the following day, uh, we drove back home and stopped at the service station. And a guy came out of the gents' toilets. I was waiting for Steve, who was in, in there as well. I was just standing outside. And this guy came up to me and he said, aren't you, didn't you play in that World Cup final yesterday? And I was like, yeah, yeah. And he shook my hand. I was like, my God, we've, we've made it. <laughs> this, the, you know, people know who we are. Mm. That's the last time anybody reckoned. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, oh. I'm, I'm only joking. You'll have to <laughs> but, that was, um, but that was in 94 and it was like, yeah. God, we know. And we were on the front page, the Times front page of the, of the front cover was half page picture mm-hmm. of, of us with the, the flag. The flag, yeah. 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 So it was, you know, we had a bit of coverage. It just... I don't remember it being at pre. I don't remember pre at no. all. Did we get a letter? No. Did you get a letter for selection or C I honestly or? can't remember. You know what? I think if we'd got letters, I probably would have kept them. Yeah, she's the real. I keep it. I keep things. I've got, I've got lots yeah. of memorabilia. memorabilia. It's the Burns um, Rugby Museum. Yeah. yeah. Is that right? Well, she's got, got you name stuff. it, she's got really? it. Really? Yeah. What's your most treasured piece? Well, cut medal. Yeah, I bet. I just wonder, because you see, you've collected lost. lots of other, yeah. other bits. No, well, you've got things that are probably cash value worth more. Yeah, this it's only a little bog standard brown medal tartan. that you'd buy with in a tartan, tartan ribbon. ribbon. You'd buy in a sports really? shop yes, with yeah. a tartan ribbon on, but yeah. there are, yeah. you know, there I'll are solid gold World, World Cup winning medals. So. so we don't remember how we were selected. Do you remember? No. Was there training before, or was it was oh, it a yeah. camp or a? Oh yeah, we had camps. Yeah, I don't even I don't think back then we had camps. It was just no, we did. We always drove have. down to somebody's school to train on a sun, Saturday morning. No, we would stay. We yeah. did. Okay. We yeah. had some training. At, I always remember training. But I'm glad at we're all on the same page here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, we were playing for so long. I just can't remember specifically for the 94 World Cup where we trained. We've trained in a whole range of different places. They kind of blend into one yeah, after they a while. Do. They do. But um, I just remember, coach, I, I remember Steve having to Darling, get up We used to go really to early. school on a right. s- Saturday morning um, and we'd all drive in from all over the country to... Was yeah. that at Chesant? Where, was that a Goths at Chesant? Might have been, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I remember that, that week. about that era. <sighs> yeah. Go on. But training? No. No? No. <laughs> no. Rugby related or not rugby related? That was post training, right. it, it, because it was a weekend. We just all went out. Oh, I see. And good. ended up out, out, which I'm not supposed to really do. <laughs> Very good for team but, bonding, though. Yeah, it was. Yeah. It's yeah. great, but it wasn't. But, you know, we finished yeah. session about two in the afternoon, and and all the Chesant rugby players were there watching the session. So they said, "Oh, girls, you know, coming out." Went, yeah, yeah, we can't really do that. I don't remember. I don't so think we, we sat were around invited. for a bit. <laughs> I did. It's the same kind of way. Miss Bax went out. The Bax went out. The Bax went out. Bax went out. Bax went out. Bax went out. And we did go out. But talking of training, one thing that we did in Edinburgh is uh, we didn't have... We, we, we went to clubs for the formal sessions, but we wanted to go and practice things like line-out. And I can remember us all climbing over a fence into a, a public park to, to actually train. That was in Edinburgh city centre. Um, because we wanted to do an extra session, literally climbing over the fence to get in. I remember that, uh, talking out, out the night of the World Cup final when we'd won it. There's a theme developing here, yeah. isn't there? <laughs> you're training, yeah. you're no, not. Yeah, yeah no, no. But I do remember. It's more interesting, isn't it? Yeah. But I do, I do remember that. I think we had to go to number ones for, for the meal thing. Yeah. And then it was right back to the hotel and we had court because it finished. And yeah. then we, but then it was cocktail dresses for, mm. for the evening. So you've got, I don't know, how many nations were there? 12? 16? I, I, I no. can't remember. Yeah, it was 12, I think it was, wasn't it? I can't, I can't remember. And all, all these women in these cocktail 16. dresses. No, it wasn't that. No, tournament no, over. No, 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 no. Big, big, big party Danger, going on. Yeah. And I don't know, about half past one in the morning, the fire alarms all went off, right? And there's these fire alarms going everywhere, which meant that about five, because it was a major place it was being held, I can't remember where it was, but big hotel. five fire engines all rock oh up. Oh, my God. So, yeah, exactly that. And, and, and I just remember there was women in cocktail dresses all over these five, five fire, fire engines. Five fire engines, 500 
and film Female and rugby absolutely and dresses. all speaking different languages, all chaos. And the firemen, once they'd realised there was a false alarm, were going, "Girls, we we got to go." <laughs> They couldn't get these women off their fire engines. And it was one of the funniest things. Do you remember why the alarm went? No. It was somebody was trying to steal the cup. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. It was somebody was... Because they had a beautiful... um, It was white gold cup that had lace around the top, which was terrible to drink champagne out of. Yeah. Literally, and it all poured out. But that was was what somebody was trying to go in and grab that off the table. And they'd, they'd got them, and thankfully they didn't need the fire engines. No, but, uh, just a little bonus ball to uh, they were the funny. World Cup party. They were funny. Is it? Did you have to buy your own shirts, your number ones, and for as most, well as an eighteen hundred? No, well, 800, 800 for most for most games we did up to ninety eight. We started being funded properly, didn't we? Do you remember yeah. those lambs wool jumpers? Yeah, we all yeah. bought it. Well, that, oh. you had to buy something. Like a cricket, so. like one of those cricket. Oh. Ones. Yeah, they Awful. were popular in the eighties. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. Light blue. Sky blue with an England yeah. rose on. Yeah. Sounds awesome. very smart. Wasn't it good? Your style? Not a good look. Well, right. Yeah. Do you still have it? Have you got <laughs> no, it in, in the archive? No, I've got it. Do you? Yeah, I bet. No. Quite right, too. Bring it on special I've occasions. I've got my, I've got my World Cup tracks 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 and everything. I've got my World Cup tracks in. I have got was that. that, was, that pur- was it sort of purple back then? No. No. It was red, white, and blue. Red, white, and blue. Red, white, and blue. Mainly blue with. Uh, white, Rhino, red, Rhino chevrons. chevrons. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's right. Everyone leads an action chevron. Yes. Yes. In sports gear. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And presumably, because it was amateur, you all had jobs mm-hmm. back then. Mm-hmm. Yes. Or, stu- yes, or yeah. probably stu- What were you doing back then? How difficult was it to say I'm off to Edinburgh for two weeks to play in a World Cup? I was. I was just trying to think what I actually was doing there. Probably not very much. Um, no, I was working in Cardiff because I was uh, playing at Bristol then. So. I think I was actually working for the parks department in Cardiff. Really? Yes. Very useful if you need an extra training uh, session and exactly. you don't have to clamber yeah, over the fence. Yes, yeah. so I was working for the parks department in Cardiff. You, I you was, were a teacher? I was a PE teacher in Warrington, Culture yeah. High School, fantastic school with great colleagues. However, when I asked to go to the World Cup, the head said, you can go, but we, you'll forfeit your wages. So uh, I had to forfeit my wages to go. So not only did I pay for the trip, I, I lost my wages. And she never even got a supply teacher in. So my lovely colleagues in the PE department had to cover for me. And um, that member, that head teacher didn't last long at the school. She did, no, she, she did leave soon after. But she used to... Was she invited to leave? By uh, yes. Was it? Yes. <laughs> yes. She, um, she used to... Here's, here's our World Cup winner. But I wanted to say to the people she was introducing no, me to, to that you. she took my wages off me and it cost me to play. And she didn't even put a supply teacher in, but wow. very different times. Whereas most the school I was at for the last 20, 24 years um, couldn't be more supportive. So they sort of said, you know, off you go, yeah. do, do well, make us proud. And, and we had boys and girls teams at school. And I'm very on- honoured to say that two of the girls who are currently playing in the England setup, uh, Sarah Beckett in the 15s and Holly Aitchison in the 7s, were both in my house at Rangers. Were they really? <laughs> Well, yeah. well done, you inspiring yeah. the next gen. Well, they were already accomplished. In fact, I told Nikki when, when I saw Holly play when she first came uh, at Waterloo, she was playing with the boys. I said, We've got an, a potential England player here. Amazing. And Sarah just, you know, got better and better. And she was so keen. And she sat in my office and said, Miss, I just want to play for England. And look what she's done. Amazing. Fantastic. Producer Sai, who's just whispered in my ear that while we've been recording this, he's popped a picture of us filming onto the Facebook group. And someone's gone, Oh my word, there's my old PE teacher. Oh, Miss Burns. <laughs> I wonder who it is. I hope she's behaving. Whoever it is. saying nice things. Somebody yeah. Jackson. Ben Jackson. Ben Do you Jackson. Know ben Jackson? You have to say yes. Yeah. Yeah. We'll edit this. Just say yes, Ben. Lovely to have you in the House of Rugby <laughs> Facebook you. group. Um, how amazing. The legend lives on yeah. in Facebook. What were you doing? I was Dare a PE I teacher ask. as well. No, yeah. I was a PE teacher as well, but my school completely different. They actually sponsored me to go. Not completely, right? but help me. We had to sell raffle tickets, do you remember? Yeah. So one of the ways that we fundraised to get there was that you were, we were given raffle tickets and the more you sold, the more you got as each individual player. Yeah. Uh, Every parent virtually in the school bought a raffle ticket off me and the school gave me money to go. Uh, and I remember the last assembly before I left and it was all about Women's yeah. Rugby and Women's World Cup and whatever and they sent and when I came back as the winner when I walked through the door into the assembly the whole place went nuts oh. and they were fabulous it was all Ian's Park School mm-hmm. that's why you got charged more because you'd obviously raised more money than you probably probably Bronxy's room I paid for as well yeah. Yeah. But, 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 anyway was also pre was still amateur wasn't it so oh gosh yeah, yeah. yeah. So we'll, just, we'll just keep that quiet okay fine <laughs> 
I, I, I'm not sure I didn't take any money. I'm not sure we're going to come money. for you now. It was to the hotel. Oh, it was to the hotel. <laughs> there you go. I think you very well deserved it. Um, so the tournament itself, do you remember, was it opening ceremony? Was it, was there a sort of yeah, we were gathering in lines. before? We were stood it? in lines. Did we? Do you remember did that? We? I don't remember I the don't remember. ceremony. I, don't. I, don't. I remember the one in 91. Lines. Standing in lines. Mm. Was it in the middle of something? We all stood in lines yeah, like that. To, yes, was, it wasn't meant to be in Scotland, was it? it was no, 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 it's going to be Holland, it, yeah. Amsterdam, yeah. Mm. Why was it not in Holland? Because uh, they couldn't put it on. They couldn't put it on. Financial so they moved problems. it to Scotland quite last quite late. minute? Mm. Yeah. Mm. And, and where did it take place in, in Scotland? All in Edinburgh? The final was at Ackies, Edinburgh Ackies. Really? Mm. Mm. Brayburn yeah. Place? Mm. Yes. Oldest international yeah. grammar. 6,000 people watched the final? Was it something like that? Ish. Yeah, I think Inch all close. the newspapers had different numbers. Yeah, yeah, they did. Yeah. Somewhere between four and fifteen. It was loud. The papers, but yeah, we think about 15. six or seven. Yeah, yeah. Uh, amazing. And so, in terms of how the tournament built, because I think it, you're right, it was twelve. It was four pools of three, I think, wasn't it? I think so. Do you, yeah. do you remember the pool stages and Russia and Scotland? Russia, Russia and Scotland. yeah, yeah. Russia and Scotland. I'm, I'm, I remember. <laughs> my memory is, I, I remember playing the first game, and then I didn't play until. We got to the semi-finals. No, so you, actually did only you play quarters. I thought he, a lot of the, of the like. Star I don't Wars think I did. Didn't yeah. play the two pool games. They rested right. because it yeah. literally it was something like the eleventh of April, the fourteenth of April, the seventeenth, mm. the twentieth, the twenty fourth. Right. That's what we expected mm. to do. That's quite a vacuum packed World Cup, isn't so it? So it was yeah. about yeah. rotating your squad in order yeah. that at, on the last game you were. And that was still really standing. that was really foreign to us because up to that point. You, it was the way rugby was in those days. You picked your best 15 yeah. and you stayed on unless your leg was hanging off. Because you, know, you couldn't yeah. sub. You couldn't no. sub. There was no subs. So you had to be injured. We are that old, to, yeah. It yes. was to play. Yeah. So it was literally... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I remember, I remember rugby yeah. special. We're all you, sat, you, sat, you sat on a bench yeah. and it meant the only way you got off the bench, and I had that experience a lot at the beginning because I played behind Karen, who was the best player in the world by country mom, was about yeah. 10 years ahead of her time. Mm. She was just extraordinary rugby yeah. player. And... Um, so I sat there twiddling my thumbs again watch it, watch and again and again and again, and, again. Right. and she didn't break at all, did she? And it was actually World Cup final, the first one in 91, where I got the first time one of them broke. So I was full back and I got on for Joe Mitchell because she dislocated her shoulder. Mm. But you didn't, you didn't get on otherwise. No. So, yeah. But I can, I can remember watching the Scotland game because I was rested and I just I didn't know what to do. I was, it Never was just it the before. strangest feeling yeah, yeah. because ever since I'd been involved, I played every game and it was... Yeah. And, and it, Horrible feeling that you couldn't actually influence what was what was going on, but the girls but they, were, just they were proud. quite comfortable wins, and it was yeah. sixty odd and yeah. twenty six yeah. odd or something. Yeah, spot on, dumb, spot dumb, on. Dumber research, absolutely. Yeah. So obviously cruising through the pool, and then it got to quarterfinal time. Canada. Didn't Did play? you begin to sort of cracking? Up. I presume you would have expected, as a, at that point, to have got through quite comfortably. Mm. Did it then sort of go up a gear? Do you remember it sort of beginning to? France, was definitely France. Like semi-final. I yeah. think because we'd played France not that long before in that mm. Castlecroft game, mm. that we yeah, knew we that really well in that game. That, yeah. that was the best know, game. France, best, best game. France were always going to be a big. It was always going to be big competition. So yeah. I think you build up towards. You always build up to a France game. Mm. I mean, because sometimes just what that you was, do. was the game is, you didn't yeah. know whether you're going to yeah. win or lose. Yeah. Yeah. Let's be fair. Yeah. Yeah. Every every time you play France, and it's still the same like now. It's still the same now. Nothing's changed, has it? I mean, it's you you you. Do not on know the day that how you perform on the day. So what was key at that point, just to getting things right? Do you remember team meetings? or I remember you, you said you were incredibly confident going to the final. Mm. Were you as confident going to the semi-final? Was there a sort of... No, I was quite nervous. I remember that one. I, th- I think I was actually quite nervous. I can remember what we did on the afternoon. Go on. We went to like a, um, a, 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 an amusement arcade and we were hitting the other moles that pop up. Whack-a-mole. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we were doing whack-a-mole. <laughs> yeah. And it was... <laughs> I remember that. Yeah. Hugely Facts didn't go there. Facts right. clearly didn't go there. You were probably out. Yeah. And we, it was like, we need to stop now. We, I don't remember us doing that at all. Right. Prepare for a World Cup so far we're playing whack-a-mole. Yes. Superstar. Oh, my God. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> and was it, I mean, obviously, the, was it, did you feel the tournament grow as, as, as you went through the stages? You mentioned 7,000 at mm. the final. Was it, did, did you feel a pick-up? And a, More media interest all yeah. the time. I remember being, we, were, we, we had a media training session in the middle of it all. Really? Yeah. 
didn't we? Do you remember that? Yeah, we oh, were called into a room that. and it was like... I, I, I was involved in that. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll that was watching the backs as well. <laughs> the three of you have had very different World Cups from, yeah. from Rep Memory. Backs and was... Yeah. Yeah. Even the game, the backs and yeah. forwards was different. You yeah. must have paid for the media session. That's what <laughs> right. yeah. 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 I was all on my hotel on the sponsorship. Yeah, but so there was there was more media. There were there were Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do remember that. I do remember that. big bit. I remember going to watch America play somewhere. I think it was Japan. It was a really one-sided game, but there was big crowds there but the, the scottish crowd suddenly became american because yeah. oh, it, it yeah. is very anti-england yeah. and yeah. it was like playing you know they just had america had their home crowd there because all the scottish fans became huge america fans and every time we scored a, a push over try we weren't favorites for the game no that we weren't we weren't no. really because no, the they beat us in 91 and their backs seriously their backs were something else yeah they were so good yeah and yeah they were very, very good. So, so it's interesting you said how confident you were. I mean, was it, was that the case throughout the game that you felt in control? You mentioned that at the start it was all a little bit hairy, scary. But well, we, I, from, from my experience, the game would have been very different to theirs because yeah. it, literally they were so dominant. You had your head down, just yeah. They were so and we dominant. Were, but but, but I, I think from a forwards perspective, we actually felt from really early on in the game felt. Mm pretty confident because actually we were pretty dominant in the whole of uh, you know every set piece Mm. I think you know we were really dominant they would would, would get up and make sure just you lot make your tackles just Mm. make your tackles any ball that America had they were going backwards so it made it made our job easier and it made our job easier they were just going back all the way through so Mm. yeah it was good Good I've got a great quote for you one American journalist wrote this about you pretty much do you remember this what England have is a dreary attitude to the game in their semi-final against France, they played a joyless, attritional slog that had one gagging on recent memories of their male international counterparts. Women's rugby has only really been going for 10 years and you'd hoped it would still be fun. Happily, that is the way of most teams, but England already wear the tortured <laughs> earnestness of the professional sportswoman. Do you mean we like to win? Stick that in your pipe and smoke it. <laughs> you mean you, we like to win? You uh, have to play the tactics of, of the do. game yeah, yeah. to win and that's what people and there were a few people that said that mm-hmm. and it was about them we played the game of rugby that was necessary to win at that moment in I, time. Think the I love pro- the fact you're pro- still ready to bite no, 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 <laughs> absolutely no. the proper rugby journalist loved it because they knew exactly what we were doing yeah yeah you won the game with you know mm. in style really mm. um, exactly Plays we'd have strengths. thrown that around yeah america played into their hands sounds a little bit bitter, he was tempted no tempting us to do it yeah do you, was it was it a spicy build-up was there because obviously there was a rivalry off the back of of 91 was there I can't imagine it was a war of words, but was it? Not really. It wasn't no. the same. There was no, no. social media, you know. No. We, beat them, we beat them out there we for beat, the first time. Yeah. So it, there was a thing called the America Cup, Canada Cup. Canada Cup. Mm-hmm. Was it, in, Canada. it was in Canada, Canada America? America. Yeah. I can't remember where we were. But it was Canada, America, Wales and us. Mm-hmm. And we went out there and that was the game that you turn things upside down but we we played america Sorry, for the, well no I'll, I'll tell you in a minute but in america <laughs> we so we played them first and won yeah. for the first time ever beat america out it's a crack in there the and then three days later we had to play canada and i remember steve saying to us steve dowling saying to us for god's sake you've just been in america get your feet back on the ground these guys they're on the home soil blah 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 well it was the most was a uh, hard game the referee was a female who had no control of the game whatsoever and blaming the ref, are you? oh my god no but the the experience literally i'd pass the ball in the centers three two one bang and i'd be hit late fellow claire three two one bang hit late all day long all day long we fixed straight fix, smashed karen who the, the player yeah. i talked to before really calm cool she was fighting on the floor with somebody else right <laughs> and I, I honestly i remember it so clearly and i looked at the referee and i said She's fighting because you haven't got control of this game. Anyway, it was complete chaos. Everything was everywhere. <laughs> Giselle, no, but it, it, it was you were awful. It, it was you awful. rolled up your sleeves and gone to work. Anyway, Mickey. they yeah. scored with three minutes to go, mm. two minutes to go mm. to, to be. Um, and we were, we had it was four points. Or I don't know what it was, yeah. but we were three points behind. Jane Mitchell then grabs the ball. Literally, we've got two minutes to think. She kicks off from completely wrong. She's in the middle of the field, but to the right of it. Referee doesn't bother about that. Somebody collects it and Jill just <laughs> boom and scores, which means we win the game 14-13, didn't we? And I didn't know, but I had 
a broken nose and two cracked cheekbones. Yeah. Right. That's what I mean, she turned it up. Because in those days, somebody just came on and put the little nasal tampons up and the blood was, I'll be fine, I'll be fine, I'll be fine. And scored the try and then played against Wales three or four days later because right. we didn't go for Should scans. Seen your face, that was battered. Though. I didn't play against Wales. Yeah. They rested me That was shows battered. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> burns his face. Mess. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you love that. I get, I get the sense that actually broken nose and a couple of cheekbones all those days work when you were playing. It was... It was it awful. A lot. It, yeah. It, yeah. We were absolutely like beaten up that day, day, weren't we? Well, well, I remember, the it just reminded me of the rooms that we had. Uh, twin rooms in the hotel that we went in, but there were twin double beds, just ordinary yeah. doubles. So because we paid for it ourselves, there was four of us in a room and there was you and Genevieve, sure. sure. And then me and Karen Almond, and we're all like this, like sharing a bed with people who are you, your teammates. It's like, oh God, put a pillar between. Yeah. And I, I turned away, from, Karen's facing that wall. I'm facing uh, Genevieve, who's, and you're on the other side of Genevieve. And in the morning, Genevieve woke, woke up and went, ah! <laughs> I said, what's the matter? She said, your face. Yeah. I didn't know I'd crack my cheekbone. Yeah. So, of course, the black eyes were just coming oh, right yeah. down. God. So I looked a bit of a mess, really. Yeah. Everyone, everyone was after that game. It was. It was honestly no, oh, it was awful we were all battered it was just yeah. one of those it's games wasn't it horrible. you scored in the final as well didn't you more well, than once didn't you how many times did you once I think twice. I got did oh. I get one try and a, we had a couple of pushovers and yeah. the, the, we shared those ah an eight, I just eighth a of dribbling. a try yeah. bit of dribbling bit of dribbling what do you remember of the, the try that was all yours as opposed to an eighth yours uh, very little right very little <laughs> Was a, I'd like just, to say I ran from 25 yards out, yeah. handed somebody you did off. did in Canada. Oh, well, I did in Canada. You did in Canada. Oh, no, no, it's, no, just, just um, close range. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I quite yeah, like the fact you share, you share the pushover tries an eighth each. Is that sort Absolutely. of... Absolutely, yeah. Because yeah. all, all eight people scrummaged and... Yeah. And we yeah. scrimmaged really we hard. And it was, yeah, very good. Bring side seats. Because we were dominating, it was very difficult because it was moving far faster than I'd yeah. ever done before at the mm. back of the scrum. I was virtually running, dragging mm. the ball, and we pushed yeah. over from a long way out. Yeah, we did. It, um, it, I mean, we got one penalty try. For, yeah, yeah. Because they were just they were good. Just collapsed. They, they were, were really good. good. Do, do you do you remember that? Do you remember the aftermath of the final and the the sense of satisfaction, elation, disbelief? Yeah. I don't remember very much of it, but that's because I think, I think you know, when we were talking about where we were going out, yes. I don't remember that much of it. <laughs> it was, yes, hanging on it the fire engine. Night. I, yeah. 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 I had like an asthma attack because the crowd, everyone ran on the pitch. I'd never had an asthma attack in my life, but I think it was just the, I was shattered and yeah. we'd just won the World Cup and there was, the crowds all ran on and I can remember just going, <laughs> can't breathe. And it, was, it took me a while to get my breath. And I was like, I didn't know where I was because people were just hitting me on the back and saying yeah. well played. And there was no sort of structure to it. And I think Karen had gone up for the trophy. And I was at the other end of the pitch, surrounded by people. Um, and then we all took, our, took we all sort of followed, followed Karen down. And I was a bit behind everybody else. And then we, we just picked up our medals. And I remember ten, everyone was milling together. Ten minutes before the final whistle, we, we were comfortably ahead. And I think it was at that point I thought, oh, we're going to win this. Mm. And then... We let in two quick tries, <laughs> yeah. seriously. And Janice, who was our vice captain at the time, blindside flanker, called us all together and she gave us an absolute rocket. I don't know if you remember that. She was like, this is not over. This is not this. And, and I can remember thinking, right, OK, like back, back on the job. Yeah, yeah back on the job. Again. And um, I, I remember that really clearly. And then, yeah, my, I was obviously right next to Karen. So yeah, it was me, yeah. Karen and Georgie, because yeah. Georgie was mm. on somebody... Yeah. Was Jane come off, I think, with a hamstring or whatever, I yes. don't know. Yeah. Yeah. And Georgie was on, and uh, the three of us were... And that, that was special, because Georgie's now godmother to my child. Oh. And, and Karen and I, obviously, half back yeah. 10, 12, we, we played, and I sat, you know, learnt, learnt the game from her pretty much. So yeah. for me, that was a really special... People that were there instantly were yeah. those two, and it was... Did you have cool. the changing room moment, champagne from the cup... One squad. Yes, with with this beautiful white gold trophy, which has gone missing. I right. tried to do a Twitter thing a few years ago. It was like the, the didn't go missing that night. No, it's no, no. gone missing. Fire engines yeah. protected that. Right, fire engines. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> you can say. somewhere. Right. It was beautiful. But Somebody it had, brings that out at Christmas, don't they? Yeah. It has a little yeah. port as it, it goes had, It had like lace around the top. It was a really lovely trophy. I've got the photographs with it, and I can remember filling it with the champagne and sitting with Annie Cole and going stick, and it just it just all fell out. So she was like putting her mouth underneath, trying to, trying to catch the champagne as it was as falling out the the trophy. Does it feel like yesterday, or does it feel like a different lifetime? A bit of both. Yeah, I was going to say, which depends which day you wake up, or how you wake up, doesn't <laughs> yeah, it? Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, I think there, there's certain memories that are really vivid that just seem like yesterday. And I think when you get together and lots of people get together and you start chatting about it, mm. it does seem like yesterday. Mm. But on the other hand, things have changed so much. Life moves on so much that it does feel like a lifetime ago. Mm. Really? I think there was a period of time where it, it was almost it just nothing, you know, it just happened and nobody. And then all of a sudden, because the game's taking up, people now say... World Cup winner, yeah. or whatever. Do you get do you get more now because of the growth in women's sport, and almost a sort of a retrospective? Oh, oh, and by the way, kind yeah. of thing. Absolutely. Now there is definitely a well, you go somewhere. Our and first people gathering. say World Cup winner, whereas yeah. for fifteen years, never. That is never said a bloody yeah. word. That is but brilliant. now you get. That's what people introduce you as or call you as, and, and you go, oh, yeah. God, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, that's awful. But for 15 years, nobody said a word. Nothing Please. after the initial two weeks or whatever it yeah. was. And Buckingham Palace, do you remember that? Right, yes. So there was a. That is explanation. There, there, there was a, there was a um, women in, no, uh, Great Britain sport. Uh, uh, yeah. Night, a day where, night, day, wherever it was, that uh, everyone... Was that's the one where you're going... Loads, 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 yeah. loads of people. The sporting life of the nation. Of, of the nation, that's, that's okay. what it was called. And so all these How people invited... Oh, 94. It was yeah, after we'd yeah. won it. Oh. So it was in 94. And Jill, myself and Emma Mitchell were, mm. were the players that went. Mm -hmm. And... In your blue cashmere... No. With England Rose. I would, no. no. And uh, no, <laughs> the no, last world didn't make no, the cup no, for no, no, no. <laughs> And we were there standing in this queue and we were playing question of sport, the three of us, right? It was yeah. like who this person is and we were scoring points as to who we could, you know, name and, and there were literally I mean Henry Cooper was there, Frank Bruno, all the mm. the jockeys, Richard Dunwoody, uh, Stuart Pierce, and Teddy Sheringham, all people, yeah, just Bobby people Jackson. everywhere. Well, we chopped, yeah. Prince. Anyway, Massive well, 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 this yeah, is the yeah. one, right? So we're all in this queue, and then this white limo just pulls up in the front, and Jill goes, right? She said, "That's Prince Nassim Hussein, right?" And and Hamid. I, Hamid. Hamid, Hamid, sorry, yeah. and 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 I said to her, I said, "If it is, you win the game. That's it." Because opens the door, this littlest thing who gets else, out. Who else would have driven? She won past, the game. You know all these sporting legends. Yeah. Literally, you know Bobby Charlton standing there. Sam Torrance, we were standing next to, and he goes to the front and gets out the limousine at the front. So we knew it would be him. And we had from the, from rugby. It was Gregor Townsend was there, and Arwell Thomas. Oh yeah, yeah, he That's was there. Um, who else was there from rugby from the, from the boys? But it was any it was, the England boys of that time. Don't know. Don't remember the England boys being there. I remember standing Probably top were. Stuart did, Pierce. He was in so the top hole, yeah, yeah. yeah. Did you was it like sort of, did you meet the Queen? Almost. I was I was in the pitch gallery. Well, I was been to the pitch we gallery were, <laughs> in we were, the blue room or whichever room it was. We were all put in like a little sort of curve with all the rugby people and a lady in waiting was talking to you and there was another group of sport next to us and another one. And then the Queen and Princess Anne and various other people came into the room and she walked across and we thought she was coming to us and she went to the group next door and it was the days before Strictly Come Dancing but it was the Come Dancing dancers so she must have recognised them and the, the main dancer at the time was Donnie Burns I think his name was and she was, she was having a chat to him about ballroom dancing we were like oh we missed her but Princess Anne came and had a really? chat she's, loves her rugby yeah. we've mm -hmm. talked about her yeah. before how proud are you now of your achievement relative to how much growth there has been in women's sport I think she needs to be the proudest and she she wouldn't say she is but the, the work she's done it's the people who have you know worked day in day out to get to get the game to develop yeah I'm privileged to have played a bit inspired a few people and to have been involved a little bit with Fairwood Waterloo and and Giselle you're coaching the the stars of the future as well and I mean I think we're all privileged to have been involved and proud perhaps sounds a bit self-centered but I'm delighted with the way things have gone. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm, you know, I, I suppose I'm, in some respects, I'm proud of what we achieved on the day and to actually, and to win the game because actually oh, we're proud yeah, yeah. of our performance yeah. at that point. Um, I've been so fortunate to be in a position where I've been able to be involved in the game. You know, when I finished playing, I was really fortunate to be able to stay in rugby and stay, you know, working in the game and helping to to move it forward and you know I don't people say oh, are you proud of what you've achieved oh, I think I'm really lucky to have yeah, been yeah. in the situation that I've been in mm -hmm. and hopefully you know have been able to move the game forward you know being involved in f some fairly I suppose quite major things over the last 
few years to be able to to take the game um change to get the game week forward. now isn't it yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah but i mean you know we, we've been able to do you know all the seven stuff that we put into place central contracts Tyrrell's Premier 15s, you know, lots of stuff like that has has happened. And it's been brilliant to be involved in that and to play a small part in in pushing that forward. And and it is only a small part because there's so many other people that are actually involved in actually making that making that happen. Um, and actually people on the ground that are delivering it, you know, people like Diz actually there day in, day out, actually helping to make those things happen. So you know, it's. Um, I say I'm lucky because I've had a. I've been in that situation and been able to have that opportunity to, to really help drive something forward that I've been so passionate about. Yeah. Mm. And actually seeing it get to to where it is now. It's a heck I of think, a story. I think I think we're all lucky, and yeah. pe- a lot of people say to me, "It's amazing now the game's professional. Do you wish you were playing now?" And I'm sort of intrigued to see what sort of athletes we could have become. That would have been interesting. Yeah. Would you love to be doing it now? But I wouldn't change it for the world. Yeah. I wouldn't change any of it. She said at the beginning she'd love to still be playing if she but could. But I wonder if you could, would you... Oh, it, I'd be interested to see what we'd have been like with the current support. My goodness me, that would have been fantastic. Yeah. But I really wouldn't change it. And if I could have a choice, I'd have it the way it was. Thank you very much. That is brilliant. There's, there's certain things that we would probably, that we have done and been involved in that wouldn't be... Allowed. Probably the right. Thing now. <laughs> I was going to say that has to be a go on moment. And, yes. I was going to say Bermuda, Bermuda tours My and goodness, things like that, and yeah, just yeah. stuff like that. That's just yeah, Phenomenal. gone, gone, mm. gone forever. I hope not. No, I don't think right. they've gone forever. But I think no, they... I hope not. That's what rugby is, isn't yeah. it? Rugby is the the complete commitment to what you're doing, and then out out. And well, yeah. Yeah. but but actually, in, again, being able to. Because that's what the, the bond is. When we meet up with mm. the squad, and you haven't seen people for 10 years' time, yes, what we worked hard together to achieve, but also the times that we spent together mm-hmm. and, and the things you got up to that you, you don't do yeah. if you haven't been part of a team like that. It's, uh, and you are, well, any rugby player will, will say that, that, that our sport is very special in that way because it is all shapes and sizes. It is all, people come from everywhere. All, it doesn't yeah. matter what you do for a living does it when no. you play rugby absolutely doesn't matter whatsoever it doesn't matter what your education is it doesn't matter anything mm. and it's just about 15 22 whatever going to d- to work together and and bonding because it is a, a game where you have to look after each other's back mm. and you have to clear people out the way to protect someone and you have to do all that stuff and then when you get to go out together and you create the memories that you're mm. talking about and and the, the things i hope that doesn't go because if that goes rugby's lost something very very special oh, yeah we, I mean, I'll use the term, we, we bought into rugby, we put everything in, so rugby's now part of us because we bought into the game. My concern for people who are doing it professionally is that because they're not buying in as such, yeah. whether they will get as much out of the game, they might be getting money in the hand and they might be having some fantastic sort of support. I worry that they might not have that, that bond that, that we have. I hope they do and I hope yeah. they realise that after they finish being professional players, if they're not picked, they shouldn't walk away from rugby. They then have to buy into rugby and, and, and get the, the, the treasured memories that, that, we, that we've made yeah. and create them for themselves. It's been really good fun. Little trip down memory lane. Thank you very, very much indeed, Nikki and Jill and Giselle for coming. I hope it's I hope it's been quite nice to it's reminisce been a lot of fun. in some ways. It's been a lot of fun. And I'm really glad that there's more recognition for your achievements as the profile of women's sport mm. rockets in the way that it does. Great fun. Good luck for the Thank rest you. of the season. Good luck with Lancashire. Good luck in the TP. Thank you. Hope that goes very well. We'll see you on a touchline somewhere soon, Absolutely. I'm sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, we're going to be back in our regular slot on Wednesday. Uh, far less interesting guest next week uh, because <laughs> Hask and Tins are back. Uh, don't forget Liquid Football with Kelly Cates, the wonderful Kelly Cates with the team. And that's every Tuesday morning for you. We've got TK with Chris Lloyd and Carl Frampton every Thursday as well. See you next week. Thank you so much again. Safe journeys home when the time comes. Um, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Speak to you soon. You've been watching the House of Rugby on Joe. Together with Guinness. Drink responsibly. Visit drinkaware.co.uk for the facts.